one of the major problems I was having here uh, locally, um, I would I would go to Walmart and uh, it, it would be a stressful thing for me because I would I would think well I park my Jeep here and then I walk in this door, which is pretty easy for anybody to do. But once you're in there and you're shopping and you go to leave, I don't remember what door I walked in. So then I'm like, well, which door do I go out? So it's just a coin toss and then I can't find my Jeep and everybody's like, well, Rick, you know, put a put a orange tennis ball on it. On the antenna. <clears throat> on the antenna. And, and I appreciate all these suggestions, but the bottom line is if it was that easy, when it gets to that point that I'm so confused and so stressed out, I don't even know what vehicle I drove, let alone looking for an orange ball on my antenna. Yeah, it, it just it wouldn't just work. Does, you don't remember that, right. oh, mine's the one with the orange tennis ball. I mean, because no. you just don't remember that. No. And before he ever gets there, he gets himself all stressed out before he even pulls in, like, Walmart's parking lot. Well, I don't do it anymore. Because, yeah, yeah. But, but he's thinking, you know, oh, this could happen or that. And, you know, he's been in there before he gets up to the register, he's done forgot his wallet. Yeah. You know, it was laying right here on the table. He walked out and forgot it. Um, he gets in there, and the one time he lost the list. <laughs> so he was just kind of going, just shopping blind. You know, we ended up with three of this or three of that because we already had two of them or something, but... Yeah. yeah, just it's it's not a good thing. So he doesn't do that anymore by himself. No, and uh, um, another thing that I have to deal with a lot, and I hate it, but it's just how the disease works. If I see someone I know, um, and I can't think of their name, um, I will go out of my way <laughs> to avoid that person because it becomes if I'm seeing me for a while, it becomes a fifty question thing. It's like, well, how you doing, or what's going on or how you feeling and this, that, and the other. And uh, I'm, all the time they're talking to me, I'm trying to figure out who it is. And it's just not there. I, I try to explain this. It's like if you're sitting around in your local cafe or sitting around your coffee table and you, somebody mentions a song and uh, they're trying to think who, uh, who, who sang that song 20 years ago. And if you can't remember that, it just drives you crazy. Well, that's how it is with this disease, except I don't remember it. <laughs> it's, it's not like, oh, it's going to pop in my head later on because it's just not there anymore. And uh, so, um, as far as dealing with that, that's been a that's been a tough thing. And uh, trying to explain to people how this disease works. So I decided that I needed to bring I needed to try to bring awareness to this disease. So uh, I got on the internet. I got on a uh, site, a dementia site that had a message board. So I, uh, it took me a while to figure it out and I finally got logged in and things like that. And I asked a question or two and I checked the site and then I go back and I check it again and there was no answer. Next day there was an answer and I didn't even know what the question was by then. So that just wasn't acceptable either because with a short term memory problem, you have to tell me the answer like <laughs> pretty quick or I'm not gonna remember. So I decided, well, this isn't no good. So I thought what better uh, uh, site would, would be to do this would be uh, social networking would be Facebook. I mean, uh, a lot of people have Facebook, so that sounded like a good thing to me. So I started up this site called uh, Memory People about uh, 4.30 in the morning, uh, the day after Thanksgiving. 2010. 2010, yeah. And, uh, it's just exploded since then. Um, we've got over 1,500 members from all over the United States and all over the world. We got them in, uh, I don't know, Australia and the UK and Japan, I believe. Japan and, uh, well, it's just New Zealand and uh, Africa. <laughs> yeah. Because Alzheimer's knows no boundaries, you know. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a site for uh, caregivers, patients, and advocates and family members. And I had a couple of people tell me, well, that'll never work. You can't put all these people together. Well, that's the only way it does work. Because uh, if you put me on a, on a Facebook site with, with three or four other people that has this disease, that would be a joke. And it wouldn't work. So uh, I, I tell people how I deal with this disease every day, and it helps the caregivers. And that in turn, the caregivers will tell their loved one who they're uh, taking care of, well, hey, this one guy told me, you know, you know, 
if in the evening if you light up all the lights in the house sundowners may not be quite as bad you know and, and I always tell people that I make these suggestions and I do them because it helps me but I'm not a uh, expert or professional in anything you know I'm just a patient <laughs> so uh, we, we you don't tell him what you know what works for him doesn't necessarily work for everybody right or some of the symptoms he goes through doesn't necessarily mean they go through because that's one thing the Alzheimer's Association taught us was when you see one Alzheimer's patient you've seen one Alzheimer's patient yeah. because they're uh, you know they're everybody's different and you you know they've got patients in their 30s you know that and people just that's hard for people to believe you know because the norm is with Alzheimer's and with us running squad for so many years it's it's that person in the nursing home in a wheelchair that doesn't know anybody and it's not like that at all I can still uh, I can still do things on my own like she works every day eight to five and she runs squad 24 hours on a Saturday that puts me here uh, by myself and uh, I know there's a, there's a bunch of things I'm not allowed to do. <laughs> Anything that runs with electric is pro is usually out. Power tools. Power tools. No, power not tools. allowed to. No, no power tools <laughs> and the stove. I'm not allowed to. I don't use the stove much because I inevitably forget to turn it off. You wouldn't think so, but it's just one of those things. So. And that's one of those things that people say. Well, I do that. You know, or you lose your keys. Well, I do that, or you know, but they don't realize it's. 50 what times the, a day. Oh, yeah, what they Rick, might do. Or an Alzheimer's patient that's 50 times a day, not once a week or something, you know. Right. I left my Jeep running in the garage one time for about four hours yeah. because I, I got out of it and I didn't. Sh I had something on my mind and I didn't shut it off. And I couldn't believe it. But It's kind of embarrassing, but, you know, it just happens, you know. So, and that's something I want to talk about. Uh, there's a lot of people who have this disease and they don't want to talk about it. They, they just don't. They're afraid and it's embarrassing. Well, I tell them all the time, you know, cancer is a disease, uh, heart disease, diabetes, and that's what this is. It's just a disease, but it happens to be a disease of the brain. It starts in the hippocampus and moves back. It's a slowly progressive disease, but it does take over your memory, and the first thing it attacks is your short-term memory. Um, <coughs> most doctors, excuse me, but most doctors will tell you, neurologists, when you're first diagnosed with this disease, you've probably had it uh, up to 10 years. 